Call the Community Services Tribal Service Conference uh, Service Committee. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Shelley to do the roll. Let's, let's do the roll. Right okay. Harley Buzzard. Here. Chris Soap. Bonnie. Bill England. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Julia Coates. Brad Cobb. Joe Crittenden, Jody Fishing Hawk, here. Meredith Fraley, Janelle Fulbright, here. Don Garvin, here. Chuck Koskin, Jr., Tyna Glory Jordan, present. Curtis Snell, here. David Thornton, present. Kara Callen Watts, on. We have more. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, friend Don Garvin, would you give the uh, Invocation done. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for, our, for your love. We ask now that you would guide us in this meeting. We thank you for our Cherokee nation. We pray that you would bless it in a mighty way. We ask now that you would be with our service people scattered all over the world. We pray that you would protect them. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to welcome everyone out this morning. I know it's uh, probably a little early for a meeting at 9 o'clock for some of us, but uh, business has to go on here at the Cherokee Nation, so I thank all the staff for coming out uh, and being with us this morning. I want to uh, go on down to the agenda and ask for the approval of minutes. Do I have a... I'll move. And moved and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. I'm going to move on into reports. Uh, Human Services Department, uh, Norma Merriman. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it seems like I was just here. Does it seem like it's been a short time since we did this? So I don't have a lot more to, to report. I'll just let you know that um, <clears throat> we are, of course, winding up the year on a lot of our programs. This is the time of year I try to do training when it looks like I might have a little training maybe there to do. And one of the trainings I had uh, sent out a notice to invite uh, this council to, and that is the Bridges Out of Poverty training that I'm doing on September the 28th uh, for all of my staff. Well, not all of my staff, but the ones that I can pull from the field. I can't shut everything down. But... Uh, 
This is a national training that has received national recognition, and some of you may have heard of it. There are two books out on bridges uh, to, uh, out of poverty, and this is one of the premier uh, trainings on helping us understand the differences in how I would just say people who live in poverty think, as opposed to middle class folks, uh, some of the, the working folks who get really frustrated when folks who come in and don't seem to change or they keep coming back or how the thinking process from folks who come from poverty think differently than some of the rest of us and how that we can, through this understanding, help them to move forward uh, in a more positive manner than rather than just becoming so frustrated with them. So I think it's something everyone at the Cherokee Nation should probably uh, experience, but we have a limited amount of seating. Some of you have responded that you will be coming. I hope that some of the rest of you will reconsider. If you, I know time's really crucial, and this is an all-day, eight to three thing. But uh, unless somebody else puts it on, this may be your only chance to do it. Yes, yeah, sure. thank you. Well, uh, will you be taping it? Because I am already booked that day. With that, um, you know, we hadn't really thought about that, but we'll ask if we can get permission to do that. I don't know that we can, but we will ask. Or will there be handouts or something? There was actually a book. There's a. This is the second book. The first book is called Bridges Out of Poverty, and I can get that information for you. Uh, it's an easy read, and it's uh, well laid out. So it is something folks could use as a reference book. But I will tell you, I, if, I, I will extend the time. I had had a cutoff time, but I've had some people who can't come. So if, if you change my, your mind by this Friday, if you'll contact myself or Jennifer Russell, uh, we will be glad to add your name to that list. We're going to be doing this in uh, the council chamber, so we, we want to certainly fill that up. And uh, I just think it's a really good opportunity for all of us to begin to have a better understanding of, of why some of our constituents and clients uh, may perceive the world in the way that they do. And it may help us be more understanding and work with them better. Um, and both books are by Payne? Yes, Dr. Ruby K. Payne is the, the author and I would start with just the Bridges Out of Poverty basic book. Norma, have you attended this uh, workshop or this seminar? No, no, I haven't. It's one that I've wanted to, so okay. part of this is selfish. Okay. <laughs> but I feel like my staff, a lot of my staff, who have, uh, those who have degrees and things, have heard some of this. But it's one of those things that you, you need, it, you need to have, it needs to be redundant. We, we need to hear it again and again because, we, you know, when you do this on a day-to-day -day basis, you begin to get desensitized. And for people who have never really been uh, exposed to these ideas, you still you just get frustrated with people. And you, you don't really understand kind of, as they say, where they're coming from. But having that understanding helps you speak, speak in a way that may be able to motivate them better or, you know, just start where they are. So I think it's a good thing for everyone, and uh, I've even asked if Shelley or Gail could attend, and I know that's difficult, but I would invite, if, if they could attend, that would be nice, at least one of them. So, so by, uh, if you could let me know by Friday, that would be very helpful. Uh, I know that we, I had told you I would have a report on school, the school clothing vouchers, and I have a partial report, so I kind of hesitate to give it to you. I, some of my staff decided they needed a little vacation after all that. So Ava had to go take care of her mother for a week. And uh, Jennifer and I have been in, in uh, Albuquerque at a conference. So my report's not as complete. But we, and we also have extended till this Friday for some of the people who haven't come in to pick up their vouchers to do so. Tony. Yes. Okay, I was looking over our budgets for getting ready to do, and I'm new to this normal to help. Sure. I found something on here, which, uh, the clothing for kids that we appropriated last time. I'm supposing that's what you're talking about. Well, we have a, we have a couple of things. One of the clothing for kids is for how much is that? Well, well last time there's two hundred thousand last year. This it. year it's asking for nine. We've got a zero balance for this budget. Um, that's your budget, so I don't know. 
but it, it, two hundred thousand was what was for the school clothing, clothing yeah. last year. It was a hundred thousand the first year, two hundred. That's it. It's hundred thousand on those. Yeah. So seven yeah. hundred this year. It. You didn't request any. Well, I we didn't. Understand. Usually, you all have. You, I haven't asked for that. That's been something that that was put in the budget by the okay. council. Okay. So, can you use it? Can if you if you receive it, it'll be used by the children that are going to start school next year. Yes, it'll be used uh, in fall of of 08. And yes. was that program? Uh, did it make an impact with the school children this year? Oh, I believe it did. Uh, our, our, my rough figures are that we're right at 2550, and we have uh, probably another 200 vouchers that people either didn't pick up or haven't given us the information that we needed to complete their applications. So this current year, we have impacted the lives of about, about 2,500 children. Oh, more, this. more like 2,600, yes. 2,600 children. Yes. And those children, will they probably need the same help next year as what they got this year? These are our poorest children. These are the children who are at poverty plus 10%, uh, which is not much. So... Um, I think the answer is unequivocally yes, that those children, if not those children, hopefully some of them will move out of that poverty level, but uh, we can only assume there will be others there. Right. How much would be required to treat people at not poverty plus 10 but at poverty? Just poverty? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to do some estimates on that. We use poverty plus 10 because that's the law heap. Uh, uh, level that we use and so we already uh, knew you know we could use some of those numbers as well as the numbers that we got from uh, our data geodata and other places to do the estimates the, the, I'll be honest with you there's a lot more children than we served out there but I don't think we have enough money to, to serve all those children so we we did the poverty plus 10 percent because we had estimated there were several thousand not all of we don't get to all of them. Not all of them apply. You know, whatever those reasons are. Well, I know I'm from Edgar County, and our teachers down there until like 11 o'clock that night. And I really thank Mom were down there until midnight, so I know <laughs> oh, that was a big, yeah. It was very thankful. Yeah. Recognize. Is the poverty plus 10 percent? Is that essentially where Johnson O'Malley? assistance is to or is that a different I that that's not in my area so I really can't answer that. And I know that JLM's been cut and a lot of them don't do some of the help that they used to. I don't know that they even do school supplies anymore. Someone very little yeah, right. So one time they did help I think with clothing, but that's been several years ago. Okay. So essentially as far as you know you were the only program helping our school age children with clothing for the new school year. I believe that at Sequoia they got some help and I believe that career services, some of the kids that worked in some of their programs, you know the programs for uh, the older kids that they also were able to help them. But the younger children. But the younger, uh, the overall K through 12, yes. Your program was the only one that targeted yes. those children. <laughs> and some, some schools help the kids some individual schools will do some things, but as far as a formal program, we were we were the yeah, UKB did also have a program. Mr. Becker has a question. Yeah, and that brings me to the question: You were able to use some of this money for our kids in custody as well. We did, and I assume that was a big plus. Absolutely, the, the children who are in foster care used to get thirty dollars a month for like clothing and incidentals which is much and they don't get that anymore so uh, we did limit it to the kids who were in foster care that were in the jurisdictional area we have a lot of children who are in foster care outside the jurisdictional area but we did limit it because it was tribal funds let's talk uh, do you know if UKB does anything this much? UKB did the same program we did Last year they did $25 per child, and this year they did $75, which is, is the same as we did. 
Thank you. Was that your question, sir? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know if there was something else of it. Ms. Kilbride. Well, my experience in Sequoia County was that we probably had twice as many people wanting the $75 and actually qualifying for it as the money was available. And I think we as a group should be thinking about putting it back into the budget and increasing it a little bit instead of it's not in there. So that's what I feel like. Well, we took applications as long as if people signed in by 7 o'clock on the day that we were there, we stayed until everyone was seen. And, and it was very late in the night in some places. Chair, I recognize Bill Langley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Norman, how do you reach out to the our areas up the way up north? The same as we do here. Newspapers, we had uh, information in the new, local newspapers. We had information in the Phoenix. We let JOM know. Now, I was told that some of the JOM programs did not get that information out. Of course, it went out in the summer, went out in June when we started uh, our advertising. So, I mean, I have no control over that, but we did try to let uh, schools know and through the newspapers and things. And I know a lot of people felt like we didn't advertise well, but I don't have an advertising budget, and we communications did their part. So... Well, and the reason why, and I'll follow up, the reason why is because nobody in our area knew anything about it. Well, after the fact. all I can say is everybody throughout the 14 had the same advertising advantage. Nobody had a different advantage. Uh, so, uh, but I will tell you that we had people in line everywhere. So, so folks, folks did, not everybody may have known about it, but folks did know about it. Chair recognizes the other people. You know what I done was I called, I picked up on myself and called the principals. You know, I heard about it so because I wanted everybody to be able to take advantage of it that needed it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I think with, as you all will find out, especially those who have, haven't kind of done this stuff before, no matter what you do, you're always going to make people say, well, nobody told me, you all didn't advertise, there was nothing. And uh, I just use myself as an example. I know many times in my life I've driven by something and day after day and never seen it. And then one day my eyes open and I see it. So sometimes we just don't pay attention until... So, you know, we're just human. So, but, but we Chair, recognize Bradley, Bradley Kyle. And I'll take uh, one more question after this. After okay. Bradley, that you heard. Are we... Um, is this the Walmart... Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Would you be open? Uh, Council Hoskin and I have discussed this and have decided to discuss it more at length. Would you be open to finding some way to ensure that those that money is being spent for what it's supposed to be spent? I would be more than open. In fact, we, we did everything we thought that we could do right, in right. the time that we had to try to ensure that. The problem being, and I've said this before so I'm being redundant, but if I could use a department store that only sold clothing, that is what I would prefer to do. But to cover everyone in the jurisdictional area is very difficult. You know, Walmart kind of has it sewn up. To have those contracts with different places is so time consuming. Don't right. So, I, uh, Councilor Hoskin and I talked about that, and, and we ran into the same thing you did. And neither one of us felt like we felt like you did a wonderful job, your department, with what you had. Thank you. <clears throat> but we, uh, when we just in, in bouncing ideas off each other, ran into the same problem. How do you, right. how do you find one outlet that? But we both would like to see some kind of a, a checks and balances on the department story, and not from your group. Right. Somehow to make sure that, you know, whether it's barcoding or what, that that's used for what it's supposed to be used. I will tell you what kind of my plan at this point is. We're going to try to start working on this. When we knew if there was money in the budget, we were going to start working on it right away. And what I really plan to do is go to Bentonville. I'm not going to work with these people here locally anymore. I get so frustrated. We give them so much money for the Cherokee Nation, and they do not give us any any edge. I don't understand it. Uh, we, I know Councilman Hoskins, I think, asked last time, did you 
asked them if they would donate some. And we, both years, we've asked them, look, we're giving you, we're buying this much. Could you give us 50, 100, 25 extra? And they won't even, you know, they just act like we're idiots for asking. So, you know, I'm kind of tired of being treated in, in this way and not giving real good service. We had several of our vouchers that when people did their shopping and checked out, they were blank, or they had $5, or they had $25. Well, don't think that doesn't cause a real problem to get it corrected. So, yeah, I'd like to do something else. Chair, recognize the council now. I always had the same question. Okay. Norm, I'd like to say something here. I'm stuck on the, uh, and it may not even work here, it may be just too far fetched out to even think about it, but upon the Pine Ridge Reservation, what they did is had a department store bring in two trailers full of folding shoes and have those kids go to those trailers and do it. Now you have stage, I don't know if they'd be willing to do something, and it may be such a mess that you couldn't do it here, but that, I know that on Pine Ridge there's, my there's a, lot of, a lot of people up there that use that, and that's what they did up there. What you would have to do is go have stops, exactly. and I think seeing the crowds that we had, yes. especially in in Salisaw and Stillwell and here in Tahlequah, boy, you would have to have a lot of manpower. Yes. And it's certainly bigger than my group could do. Not that it couldn't be organized. Anything can be organized if you're given the staff and, uh, you know. Well it, well, it would certainly take take this away from Walmart. Maybe it open their eyes up. There's other alternatives instead of using them. But that's just an idea, you know, something. And you right. Thought it. I, and, and also, uh, there's another tribe that has been doing this for a while that I want to speak to and just see what they're doing. But I will tell you, anybody else that's doing this is doing it on such a much smaller scale and in a smaller geographic area that that becomes a, our, our real issue because we did go out to all the areas. We went to 10 different locations throughout the jurisdictional area. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have community services. I uh, think Darlene Foreman is here for Charlie. So, Good Hi, Darlene. Good Hello. Um, I don't have much to report on either. We're basically um, still working on the uh, dry creek water lines, and that's moving along pretty good. We're about 40% complete. Um, we're still, I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at the model home that's built over here. That's all dried in. Uh, the next items that we'll be putting on that is the porch, the roof, the siding, and the uh, heating and air, and then drywalling inside. So, um, Hopefully, providing the weather cooperates, we'll have that done in the next couple of months. The self-help housing is moving along good. Um, we've just recently purchased uh, equipment that is for the self-help housing program. Before, we'd always just borrow uh, equipment from rehab, so if they needed it that day, we were you know, without equipment. So we have purchased that, so hopefully, uh, and then we're hiring additional staff. Um, to be at each of these locations. I know we have houses going up in the uh, Kenwood area somewhere, um, Ader County, Rogers County, and so we're trying to get enough staff on board so that we can have the assistance there for the families at each location. Before we were kind of just, you know, spreading pretty thin with the uh, staff at the Ader County and we needed somebody in Kenwood or Rogers and so we're we're moving along and hopefully in the next couple months we'll kind of get it lined out so that we can see more progress on these self-help houses. Um, and then the Oaks wastewater treatment I know that was addressed last month and um, there's been an environmental done on that and we're, that's been sent to the Fish and Wildlife Service and we're waiting on the results for that and this was sent to them on August the 27th and so uh, they said it'd take, take about a month so hopefully the next couple of weeks we'll get the results of that so that we can get proceed on that also. Uh, the Belfont Nycut Community Building I think I reported on that last month also and um, I kind of gave a figure, I think, on that, but we're going to have someone go out tomorrow and do more of an extensive overall of the community building. And so there is funds available in the uh, community works program, and so we're going to utilize that, and the community members have uh, agreed that they would do the work on that if we provide the materials. So, um, Yes, Ms. Thorne. 
I appreciate that very much because I asked that question last week of you and, and I hadn't really got the answer yet, but I appreciate you doing it. Okay, well. I know they need it for real bad. Yeah, so, you know, we'll have something, a written report after tomorrow. Ms. Philbright. Well, that's something I'm really especially interested in because when I spoke when you reported about the air conditioning, I've been over there quite a lot and it's not just air conditioning. That building has been neglected for many, many years and it's really comparable to the one at Cherry Tree. And I had asked uh, Ms. Fishenhawk about the one over there. She said it was in relatively good condition. And they're the same age. They're the first community buildings built. And I would really appreciate some work being done over there as well as Mr. Thornton. Yes. Well, we have the funds available and so um, as soon as, like, at, like, after tomorrow, we'll get the actual <coughs> estimates of the overall and we'll get started on it. So, yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's all I had um, that I wanted to mention. Does anybody have any questions that I possibly could answer? Darling, I have one. I know a new program through housing as to where Cherokee Nation is going to furnish the uh, electrical water pad and stuff like that. But it's a, see, the new programs you've got to the house that you're showing up here. And I understand the policy has not been approved yet. Is that still the case? Correct. Yes. That is sitting in administration. Administration. Okay. Do you have any idea when the policy might be approved? Have you talked to the administration? Well, um, I think there was a miscommunication um, because we had several um, departments reviewing that. And um, so I think it was our impression that there was changes that need to be made and after communicating with everybody that was the final version that we sent and so I'm hoping you know within the next month that we can get that all lined out and have that approved so that we can get these building packages moving. So so it's all ready to go except for Correct. the policy. Right? Correct. The, the, the funding is, is here and available. Yes. Okay. Is there any more questions for Ms. Foreman? Okay. Okay. Thank you darling. Thank you. Next up is Housing Authority, Mr. David Sutherland. Good morning. Welcome, David. Uh, passed out a packet, it's got some information in it. Uh, a couple of applications, one just regular housing application and one with the uh, with home ownership for the Community Shield. Uh, telephone directory. What we call fact sheets. Uh, talks a little about each program we have. And if all else fails, there's a card in there with my phone number and email on uh, But if you don't need the information, there's this handy, neat file thing they put in it. So uh, you get some use out of something in that pack. I uh, just wanted to mention a couple things. One of the things um, Chief talked about last night his, uh, his address was uh, in the Haas, the reauthorization bill that had, um, had been approved out of the House uh, with the amendments attached. Uh, the, the Senate started debate on in the Haas reauthorization yesterday. So um, in, in, uh, I can't remember who said that, but I, they think there will be a vote on it later today. So uh, we'll kind of keep a, uh, an eye on that and see, see where that goes. Um, the only other thing I was going to talk about was just uh, you mentioned Mr. Uh, Snell that the, the three houses that you mentioned up in southern Delaware County, oh, yeah, right. we've we got water and sanitation looking at that to make a recommendation on what we need to do to correct that. I guess that was put in in uh, a, a sand pit back in the 70s or early 80s. Right? Yeah. So uh, they'll, they'll have to spend a little money to, to fix that and correct that problem. But they're making a recommendation on how to, how to proceed. Uh, that's all I've got today. Reporting last night, and uh, if anybody's got any questions, I'd sure be happy. To. I can ask Chris, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the impact that the potential impact uh, the currently being reviewed by the Senate? Um, the 08, uh, as I understand it, of course, the House has its version right now, and the Senate is debating its version. And uh, assuming that there's a little difference in that, then at some point they'll get together and come out with one bill, uh, one appropriation, which will probably all be wrapped up in an omnibus bill later on in the year. 
Um, but we'll just have to wait and see how those amendments play out. If they end up on the final version. Um, no, this is this is go ahead and assume that they do. If they do, right. What's uh, the then then it's uh, business as usual until the courts make a decision. Um, and, and to be honest, I don't know what all the the court litigation is. I know that there's one in tribal court. I keep hearing there's three suits that have to be decided. I, I'm aware of two, one in tribal court and one in no. federal court in D.C. Actually, what I'm asking you, Mr. Sutherland, is not to speculate on what the court's decisions will be or whatever. Just what, what is the impact of your department as far as do three houses not get built or do, do this, does, not, does the, well, the total they, budget for OA out, or? If it comes out in Cherokee Nation's favor in the court system and, and the funds are then zeroed out, uh, there is no housing. I mean, that's the impact. I didn't understand it that way because I thought that was part of the funds we don't see today. We just wouldn't see a new program. It wasn't that it cut Nahasda from us. Yes. It was a new program. No, it was, uh, uh, we would no longer get Nahasda funds. It was funds. complete, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So what's the amount that, that uh, they allocated? It's uh, approximately $30 million a year. Um, funds, uh, of course, we get roughly 12 to $15 million at the Housing Authority, and, and, the, and the rest of it is at the nation through rehab, and, and uh, I think Norma gets a little of it, and uh, Diane Kelly's group gets a little of it. And, uh, so it's spread around through several different departments, and and that funding just wouldn't be there. Now the immediate impact is we, we're spending, still spending some 06 money. Uh, we just started spending uh, and just became available in 07 money. So there is a, a, a period of time that we can continue to operate. Now Housing Authority itself, uh, we have rental properties and, and homes that we're still collecting rents on and we would continue to operate those. Uh, of course the subsidy would be gone. Uh, where we're, we can only charge someone, uh, like in one of our units, uh, we can't charge them over 30% of their adjusted gross income. That's federal regulation through, through the NAHASDA program. Of course, if we don't have any NAHASDA funds, we would probably do away with that 30% and set some minimum rents on, on those houses, and folks would have to start paying a little more money. Right? Record uh, David Thornton and then Don Thornton. David, do you remember back when the Seminoles had their problem? Was their housing authority cut, or did someone take over that program, or was it? Uh, to be honest, I, I do not know. No. I don't know. Thank you. Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. David, if worst comes to worst, how many employees would you give yourself mm -hmm. uh, Worst come to worst. Um, We've got 170. Uh, we still have to collect funds. I mean, we would lose. I, I, I'd hate to speculate, but it'd be a, a big number. I mean, the funds just wouldn't be there. And, and, and I'm not sure I, I, I would have. There was some discussion in some of the other programs, like the IHS, uh, where the tribe has contacted to run programs for the, you know, in, instead of the IHS or the VA. I'm not sure. It's possible that those funds would continue to come through IHS and, and they would administer the programs. I don't know if HUD would, would be able to do that or if, if that would be available. But there's so many unknowns at this point. Uh, it, it's a hard thing to speculate. That lady that came to Muscogee, she couldn't care less about that. She said, the heck with that. Yeah. She was pretty tough. You mean Pocahontas? <laughs> it's a difficult issue. I Nick, I have a, a question, and I don't know where I've heard this or, or what, but is there some problems with the community shield and sort of insurance? Uh, seeming like I heard that uh, it's going to be dropped or it's going to be moved or cut. Um, thank been two or three, four years ago. You know, when they first come out, it was they, they called it uh, it was Community Shield, and then there was what's called a Native American Shield. Yeah. And in Oklahoma, and then and the Native American Shield, it's only for 
the, for property and trust. Um, it really was designed for reservations. And in Oklahoma, there's some, uh, well, some discussion on whether or not that Ameren can legally fund those uh, on Native American Shield. They were trying to do it on non-trust properties, regular fee simple. So they have cut back that practice, but that was two or three, four years ago. And if it's if it's still trust property, uh, they will do the Native American Shield. Uh, but they that doesn't go through us. It goes directly through Ameren. Now, through Ameren, there are also income guidelines for getting those insurance. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, we, we stick with the 80% of the national median, and you have to be charitable. And the way that works is the housing authority pays the premium, and then the, the homeowner pays us back, and I think it's 28 bucks a month or something like that for a stick bill, and 32 or 3 maybe for a, a mobile home. Now, there is some, Ameren would like to um, to change the wording a, a little bit. Um, they might have even had some discussion with Ms. Fraley uh, and, and make that a tribal program, uh, like a tribal benefit, I think is the way it's worded. And, and they haven't exactly convinced me on, on whether or not it's a good thing or not. So that, that still might be in the works down the road, but uh, at some point that... We may bring that back. Okay. Any more any more questions for David Sullivan? Okay, thank you, David. Thank you. Emergency Housing Rehab, Sharon Lay. I think we have David Pruitt here in court today. Welcome, David. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Sharon Lay is on travel in Oklahoma City, some HUD training. I uh, passed out an update of all the different programs we have, the status of them. Uh, got any questions? I'd try to answer them for you. Mr. Thornton. Back to the this budget that came out yesterday, the part that I was looking at from the emergency repairs, and come up with $100,000. How long would you estimate the $100,000 would last in that emergency repairs program? How many months? Uh, just estimating? Mm hmm. Really, not very long. Probably, uh, just guessing. I'd say a couple months, probably. Last year, did we spend somewhere around a million dollars in that program? A million seven, I think. Did you spend all the million seven? Yeah. And that was for emergency. <coughs> emergency. Yeah. Mr. Baker. That would be the up to five thousand dollars for the. Yes. Low income people to, that if the roof's leaking, you can fix it, or if the stool's backed up, you can do the septic tank, or you can, if the door's kicked in, you can get them safe again, or if the windows are leaking air or in the siding, you can throw a dog through it, we can fix that. Yeah, that's the program. Emergency. That's the program. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Chair, recognize Bradley Cough. Um, what would you estimate, a rough estimate, that you spend? emergency repair requests? Well, that's hard to say. It, it varies so much from one house to the next, but we're limited to 5000 per house. I knew that. Okay. Any more questions for uh, David? Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. Moving along to old business, I see none. New business. Anybody got any new business? Seeing none, i will ask for announcements. Anybody going to be feeding anybody someplace? Yet? We're looking for a place to eat here. Employee luncheon. <coughs> I think it's... All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.